Hola, boys and girls. Maggie, say hola. No? Okay. So, a couple days ago, I chose to remove the sofa that we have in our RV and set up a proper desk since this little space we have here will probably become our mobile office as we bring the tiny house on wheels on the road. So went with an uplift desk, grabbed a couple 27 inch monitors, tossed the MacBook Pro over there, the new snazzy fancy 32 gig M1 Pro Max, I may add. Anyway, so here's the deal, I need some, I need some music because as we know, music is life, Tid. Anyway, um, but because of this fancy smanchy desk that raises up and raises down, I didn't want to stick a bunch of cables back there. So, you know, conventionally you have like a satellite over there, a satellite over there, a sub somewhere, and that just became worrisome. So I, I'm thinking I have a plan. And that plan B, Bose, friggin' soundbar. So why not, right? So this is a bit of an experiment. I'm not sure if anybody's using one of these, but I'm thinking the grommets behind the desk, there's one over there, and there's one over there. They are approximately 27 inches wide. And if you look at where the monitors sit, they're sitting back from that edge just a few inches. So to me, in my brain, that might be the perfect width for that thing. So I'm going to ask my wife to hold the camera and because uh, I'm, I'm still got the gimpy leg. I'm going to rip this bad boy open, stick it over there, and let's see how she fits. So here we go. So here we go. Throw that there. It's got some zip openings on it. This came from the Best Buy. Ooh. Little factoid. The first, first, I guess, decent job I had as a kid was working for the Best Buy in Connecticut. And they had the guy from Herman Munster on it. And his little tagline was always, if you didn't get it, if you didn't get it here, you didn't get a Best Buy. And um, I'm not sure if that's the same company, but uh, it'd be kind of cool if it was. I, I think it was, but that might have just been somebody blowing smoke at my butt. So, all right, so what's in the box? What's in the box? Got some decent foam, almost like a Kaizen foam. Can't use it for anything else. Of course, you already saw me pull out the bar. Got some cableage, more cableage, a remote. Don't know how that'll work with a computer. Uh, some manuals. Who's ever going to read those? And that's, that's really about it in the box. So now we know. What's in the box? All right. So let me just throw this over here. That goes back there. Cardboard and trash goes over there. And yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking that's the proper height. Now let's look at see what she has on it. Now, in my, if you've ever seen any of the videos that I put up before of my office, I usually have like reference speakers up there. So totally flat response, trying to not screw up the sound at all. And of course, we know Bose has a very opinionated sound. But yeah, I think for what I'm doing, this is going to work. We got a couple of bass ports here. Uh, don't know what that is. Um, who cares? Uh, so HDMI input, which I'll never use. A service port looks like a mini H, uh, mini, uh, a micro USB, which again it's labeled service, so it's useless. A toss link connector. So I'm not sure. I know the um, I know the 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 MacBook Pro, uh, the current model. They did add all these ports back to it. So we have an SD card, an HDMI, a bunch of other stuff, and there is a 3.5 millimeter jack on the other side. I don't know if it has optical like the old Macs used to, so I might I might check that out. I'm not sure. I'm also moving the Mac off of my desk and I'm gonna stick it on a shelf that goes underneath the desk, but it's on back order. So anyway, so continuing with our tour, we've got an optical in, so the toss link connector, uh, a separate, looks like a, I don't know if that's 3.5, but a separate port for base, a separate port for the IR receiver, which I'm probably not gonna use any of these. And so let's switch over here to the cables. All right, so standard uh, optical cable. It's 
kind of neat that they include this now that everybody's on wireless, but I'll, I might use that. We've got our power supply or power cord, or for those of you across the pond, our mains lead. And good thing it's not grounded. If you guys ever had to do a ground lift or had any hum, you'll know that this is one device you don't want to have a grounding plug on. So we'll toss that there. I'm hoping that's all she needs. Can you step back just a hair, Glenda? All right, so then this, slide it there, flip the bad boy over, and I'm thinking it should fit. Should fit some nice lock right there. Let's get this out of here for a second. All right, so that's right at the edge. Let me just make sure it's at the edge over there. Yeah, so that's that's dead on. That's right at the back. So we'll move that one back there. Let's move that one back there. It's not centered. Got to get the logo centered so that we know our chi is in place. All right, so I actually am thinking about removing one of these monitors so I can get a better look at the ocean. So or at the lake, I should say. Kind of a crappy day at the moment, but anyway, um, Freddie, could you go down there and because of that, can you go stick the power cable in the UPS, please? All right, so there's a little 1500 APC UPS down there just to make sure that we don't lose our crap should we lose our power. Let's see what we got going on here. So let's unwrap the remote. Wow, they friggin' hermetically sealed the remote control. Like, good luck using it. Oh my god. I think in every video where there's some kind of unwrapping. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's saying hi. She's saying hi. Hello, Bose. Hello. I hear you. Mother, come on. Oh my god. You know? Alright, so we got that off. We got that off. Let's hit the Bluetooth button. Okay. I haven't done anything except mash the Bluetooth button on the remote. The head up here to the Mac and go into the Bluetooth settings. Up oh, Echo. Uh, let's see the bows. What? What? what the, where? That's the gaming headset. Well, then you don't have it enabled. Bing, bing, bing. Better have it enabled. Let's see. Hit the Bluetooth button again. So I'm holding down the remote. I know what you're saying. Read the manual, right? So let's back up. Let's read the manual. Connect the power. Set up the soundbar. Oh, use the Bose app. Let me go into Bose. B-O-S-E. Hit the power button. Okay. So I mashed the power button twice on the remote. Shutting it off, turning it on. All right, so, huh. Seriously? Bluetooth has an asterisk. Why does Bluetooth have an asterisk? I don't see anything that references an asterisk. Hmm. Let's try the standard hold the button down. So holding the button down. Now I heard a different sound. Hmm. Let me log into the Bose app. Come on, this is such a great idea. Bluetooth preferences. Oh, soundbar. There we go. Connect. There we go. Now we have some music, or we have some some uh, some connectivity. There's nothing I can really check. Actually, you know what? I'll test one of my videos. Here's one. Hola, freaky people. That audio sucks. All right, so it works, and fortunately, it's a very center center channel heavy right now. So anything I'm playing out of it comes out of the center channel. What I was hoping for was a wider sound field, but I will play with that and and be right back. All right, so I had to pause, um, not only to look this up, but we got a quick quick rainstorm that came through. So I was able to get everything running as expected, and it's a decent setup. It's definitely not as high fidelity as you would hope it would be, um, especially from Bose. It doesn't sound like a lifestyle system or an acoustic mass system or anything like that. It's a decent sounding system, and it accomplishes the goal of, of having a very minimalist 
uh, speaker setup. What's interesting note about it is it does seem to differentiate between spoken word and things that have more dynamic uh, content. So movies and music and, and that type of thing. There also is something that is not discussed in the, in the manual, and that is the fact that this does connect to the network and it is done to update everything. So if you saw me earlier, I tried going into this Bose music app and wasn't able to find anything. Uh, I finally was able to to associate the app or link the app to the device or to the soundbar. And the way that that was accomplished was by essentially holding down the mute and the music button on the remote for several seconds until that went into a pairing mode. Once I was in that pairing mode, I was able to add it to the Bose Music app. It immediately found an update, connected, to, or it asked me for my networking information, so I gave it to the local area network. It connected, updated, pushed an update to this device, allowed me to set up some providers. The interesting part about it, and is pro and why I'm talking about it, is there's two things. So on some of the other Bose devices, like the headphones, you have another app that'll let you connect to multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time. However, this app has the ability to choose the source of the soundbar. And as you can see, it is only one Bluetooth device at a time. So I think it might be because it's using an older Bluetooth protocol. I, I'm, I'm not a Bluetooth pro, but I believe that's the, that's the deal there. Um, so you literally can only have it connected to one Bluetooth device at a time. That's important because you can do it from the remote by holding down the Bluetooth button and basically going back into a pairing mode, but but then you're you're kind of starting from scratch from whatever device it's connected to. And so by connecting it through the app, you can shut off a Bluetooth device, connect to a second Bluetooth device or a third Bluetooth Bluetooth device and not have to go through that pairing situation again and again and again. So the app does come in handy for that. The other thing is the audio settings in the app cause you or have the ability to choose different um, EQ modes. So there's one here in case you have it backed up against a wall. It'll kind of change the sound uh, to to help uh, that sound refract against the the wall. You have another one for dialogue mode where you can have the sound bar change its dynamic range based on spoken text. If you're watching YouTube videos or that type of thing, that might be appropriate. And of course, you can change the actual center channel volume, bass, and treble, which is something you cannot do from the remote or from the device. So it's uh, it's definitely meant for a television setup, and so I get it. I understand why there's some limitations there, but the, the end of the, the moral of the story is setting this up as a computer speaker it works just fine. You get um, some decent sound from your music. If you are going to use it, you need to crank the sucker in order to get uh, the entire sound bar to uh, be useful and for your sound stage to increase. But oh, other than that, it um, like I said, low profile, out of the way, sound bar, computer speakers. It's, it's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, if you're looking for something with more bass or more more of a, uh, a more realistic soundstage, you might want to go with like a 2.1 or a 5.1 setup. But um, yeah, for this environment, for what I'm doing here in the RV, you know, it works perfectly. So the Bose Soundbar 300 connected to Mac OS as my desktop speakers. Good first, uh, first step. And um, yeah, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, I'm curious to know if anybody else is is doing this kind of thing. So, yeah, there you have it.